Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. We discuss six questions in nine minutes because leaders know how to be concise. We'll jump to it with our guest today. First question in a few sentences. Tell us who you are and what you do. Hey, Sean. My name is Chuck Ingram. I'm a co-founder and CEO of a CRM consulting company called Congruent X. Congruent X. We are 100% virtual. Um, we were founded right before the coronavirus started. So it's interesting. A lot of the things that are hard, but we had to just do it that way in this firm. So I think we've learned a lot of things that will carry us forward. So we basically help companies align their people and think of like their front office technologies, think CRM and so forth to, to get business outcomes. And we do it with a little bit different approach. We focus on clients, not necessarily just projects. We focus on people and we don't say resources and we focus on outcomes, not just a bunch of billable hours. So that's what we do. Good approach. Like it. Question number two, what's the best thing about working with a team? Sean, you know what? Um, you can tell even with my high definition camera, I've got a couple wrinkles. <laughs> um, as I get older, you know, I think all of us get a little more reflective and you start to think about it. A, a lot of times work is not how much money you make or how many, we helped our you know, company get a 25% increase against quota this year. It, it becomes about people and about relationships and people that you work with that were, you know, they were a young person when they joined the company, but they had, a, you know, they bought a house, they had babies, they plan to do something in their career and you help them do something they didn't think they could do. And it, and it all comes back to being a part of something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. And it, it comes back, uh, back to being a part of service. You know, it's all about service and, and service to each other and service to our clients and, you know, kind of service to a bigger, bigger cause. Oh, I like that a lot. That's, that's a great approach. Uh, question number three, I hear from other leaders of teams that it can be a challenge to get team members engaged. Tell us your thoughts. <clears throat> i tell you what, I, I have, uh, being a CRM guy and CRM, the biggest challenge with CRM is, is adoption. I've really kind of tried to tease out issues around this, <laughs> this problem. And plus the, the business that we're in and consulting, it's very competitive for talent. So we have to focus a lot on trying to build a, a, a great team. So um, what I've read about a few years ago, a couple of years ago is, is Gallup says that about half the workers at any firm are disengaged. And you may be well aware, 50% is not great. <laughs> and it, it's funny, it's about that same percentage for the number of people who like their CRM. And we're working very hard on that in our firm. We don't think 50% is okay. So it's funny, 50% are disengaged. Think about there's other options there too. So 13% are actively disengaged, which means they're, they hate it. You know, <laughs> not only do they hate their role, they're telling other people how much they hate it. They're becoming an amplifier for their bad attitude about work. And um, about 35% are actively engaged. So they're advocates. They love their job and they're thinking beyond their job and all that good stuff. Um, the good news in that is those numbers don't seem super encouraging, but they are the best they've been since uh, I think 2000. So it seems like companies are making an effort to try to engage their employees more and and make people feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves. But uh, that's a, a part of it. If you think about it, a lot of times the way big companies are set up, the, the types of leaders that you look at, you, you have, are, 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 is they're designed to be kind of numbers folks. Mm -hmm. And they know their numbers backwards and forth, but they have this kind of odd scarcity mentality where they don't, take risks and, and they manage failure and they manage blame of failure and try to make sure they're in a position to get uh, capture success and get credit for success. And that can become good for an individual. But the question is, is that 
the kind of person that people want to follow mm -hmm. or go into battle with. And, you know, that that's a, a lot of the reason why a lot of us become entrepreneurs is so you can, you know, it's not for individual stuff. It's so you can be, you know, let, let's make a real team. Let's go right. into this thing together. Great. Sense. Great. Yeah, great points. And I appreciate you bringing up Gallup because I'm a big fan of Gallup and their research. And that's a lot of what I use in my awesome. own coaching. But, uh, but you're absolutely right. And I like your correlation with what you're doing with CRM, that there's always that sense of active disengagement where mm -hmm. you're just completely unhappy, not just ambivalent to it, you are unhappy. So that's a great, a great analogy. Uh, question number four, what other piece of advice do you have for leaders of teams? I touched on one and I probably can't say it enough. It, it, it's interesting in, in my own personal career and I won't go in because I've been around for a while. <laughs> Too much detail, but you know, one person who's not a business person I'm very close to is my wife. And my wife, I noticed I was in these sales jobs and um, I loved it. I lo still love to sell, but I wasn't getting the fulfillment out of it. And she, st she goes to these mission trips to Africa and all these places. Mm -hmm. she, she can't right now, obviously, but she would come back so um, energized. You know, she's in the bush and he's, you know, difficult environment and comes back and energized and, and it sort of helped me make, I'm slow. <laughs> so it it kind of helped me make the connection to servant leadership. And I worked with, at a company um, a while back called Tribridge. It was based in Tampa, Florida. And the, the culture they had was around servant leadership. And I went, this makes sense to me. I get this. And uh, I'm, I'm going to latch onto this because it makes me want to go to work. And it makes me happy when people that I work with are successful and with clients that I work with are successful. So, uh, I mean, if you even think about it, um, it, it, it's got to be a little more than servant leadership. You know, that's really important. You got to add vision in with servant leadership. So if you think, you know, we're in a political season and I, that's a top toxic subject, so I won't touch on it. But if you look back, leaders who've had a positive vision for the future have always done really well. And folks who focus on the negative, even though sometimes they'll get you some votes in the campaign, they don't do as well. So um, I think that servant leadership is super duper important. Having a vision that people can buy into and think, yeah, this is, I can, I can help, I can help with this. I can make a difference is, is really important. And then finally, how do you do stuff? You know, what do you, how do you, how do you start going to, to do stuff? And I was, I'm not an engineer, but I've become a huge fan of theory of constraints. It's like find the primary constraint, the number one thing that's holding the team back and, and subordinate everything to that. Focus on that constraint. Make the main thing, you know, sort of the main thing. So <laughs> that's pretty simple. Those three things, servant leadership, having a vision that people can buy into and focusing on the process, theory constraints. Great tips, thank you for sharing those. Question number five, what other successful leaders of teams would you like to recognize that have had a positive influence in your life? So I, I'm gonna recommend um, two friends who are very influential to me, and, and if I can, I'll, I'll recommend a new friend. Um, so I have a friend called JC Quintana, JC is the author of three books, I think, and um, he teaches college courses around um, relationships. And it really inspires me around my focus on servant leadership. Um, amazing guy. And, and he's, he's done kind of the theory of constraints thing on relationships where he's broken it down into these seven um, sort of lenses that you can look at relationships through uh, and you can use it with your personal relationships too. So he's really smart. Another one is Jessica Noble, great friend, one of my favorite humans. Um, <laughs> she's super smart. Um, she's really good at, at um, influence without control. You know, a lot of times in big companies or any company, you, you don't always manage everything, but you, you want to be able to influence things. And she's really good at that. And, and she serves, a community that's beyond people that report to her or even work in, in her firm. And there's a guy that's made a big influence on me recently. Um, I'm in this little 
um, tech incubator here in Woodstock, Georgia, where I live. And I have an office here because I uh, like to get out of the house a little bit, but still be safe. And, and there's a guy here, his name is Jonathan Chambers. Fantastic guy, a servant leader, ties in. You know, we all can't, it'd be cool if we could all be in the United, you know, United Way or, you know, be missionaries or something. But a lot of us have to, you know, we, we have to go make stuff and build things. And, and he's tied those two things together really, really well. So that's my three. Those are great people. Thank you for recommending them. It's always uh, nice to hear of other people that have really made a difference in the lives of the guests that come on the show. So thank you for recognizing them. Last question. Tell us about your first job. This is the hardest one. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I, I was thinking about this and, and your first job is your first job. So I got to talk about it. So um, I worked at Wendy's. I was fired from Wendy's and I, it was my first job. And I remember like me and my mom going to the, the store and buying the, the, the polyester pants that I needed to wear to work. And I was so proud of getting this job at Wendy's, but I, I'd learned something. They, they, I worked on the grill. And if you notice that, you know, Wendy's always has fresh food. And it, part of that is the estimating powers of the guy or gal that's running the grill. So if you see people, you know, five people coming in, you know, you kind of have to guess, is, is that a salad person? Is that a hamburger or a single? Oh, that guy might want a double. And, and I got really good at that, but I was only, I was being really myopic about my, my role. And I didn't learn how to do the cash register or, you know, I was kind of focused on my stuff and nobody else's stuff. And eventually, you know, if, you, if you're good at only one thing in the firm and you don't care, they, they let you go. And, you know, I, I think that was a lesson that I purposely tried to learn from after that and tried to, to focus on helping other people and not just focus on my stuff. So I'll never forget that lesson. <laughs> Sounds like it had some value, even though it didn't maybe maybe didn't turn out quite like you had hoped. But uh, nonetheless, yeah. a lesson learned. That's right. But they had good food when I was there, though. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. And Chuck, thank you so much for being on the podcast. How can people find you? Thank you. Um, easiest way is just email me. Um, I'm all. I, I try to try to be all over social media, but you know, if you just email me or go to our website, you can find me. Chuck at congruentx.com. And congruent is for people and technology aligned. So Chuck at congruentx.com, uh, www.congruentx.com. Great. Thank you. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, you can find us on LinkedIn by searching Blue Sky Business Consulting. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great day.